As Kanye would say, you've interrupted my creative process. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And Happy New Year! Uh, I mean, not, Happy Leap Year! It's not Thank you. I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's not New Year's. Okay, fine. It, it's a leap year. It's a leap year. Specifically, today is February 29th. We are broadcasting, unsho- uns- unshockingly, from the past! Ooh. Ooh. And, but it, it is a day that is designed specifically... Mm-hmm. To fill gaps. Mm. Gaps, in this case, in time. Mm. So, we're going to talk about those gaps. We're yeah. going to talk about the, that gap and lots of other gaps and how we fill them and how they get filled. But first, icebreaker. Mm-hmm. Ryan, what are you going to do on February 29th? Since it's a Monday, it's fairly predictable. Mm-hmm. I am going to go to work at the college, mm-hmm. go home and change my clothes, mm-hmm. and then come here and film a podcast. Oh yeah, that's pretty much how. I'm Guess gonna it is a Monday, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's how I'm going to fill my time. We're going to film and release a podcast in, mm. in the same day. Doesn't happen too often, actually. So you are you are very special. <laughs> audience of ours that uh, that we are working double time today just to bring you some special leap year goodness. You say that like we're filming it on the leap year day. I like to um, I like to maintain the <laughs> illusion, <laughs> which know? would be cool. Except like two minutes ago, you'll you'll remember the part where we're like we're recording from the past. <laughs> You're right; they've already forgotten. That. We, are, we are we are we are entirely we live in the present. <laughs> Keeping keeping the illusion alive that this anyway. Is yeah, alive. I guess I will similarly get up and uh, work out and go to work and uh, come home. We'll find dinner at some point. Yeah, and then uh, record some podcasts. Yes, yeah. Monday night is podcast night. Monday night podcast night. No football, no nothing else. Podcast night. Occasionally swing dance night. Occasionally. One time swing dance podcast night. <laughs> Seems more like a vlogging activity. It but. would be fun. Yeah. But as we said, though, leap year. When you really think about it, it's there to fill a gap. It's a rounding error, basically. Yeah, I mean, the Earth doesn't actually go around the sun in exactly a year yeah. in 365 days. No, there's a little, there's a little tiny quarter. Yeah, that just gets sort of wibbly wobbly. I mean, why me yeah. stuff that gets lost? Yeah. And you got to pick that stuff up and you got to fill that gap. Otherwise, you wind up just sort of losing a day every four years. Yeah. And, you know, at 28 years, that becomes a week. Mm-hmm. You know, in the next, say, 30 ish years, you lose two. 100 every century in a bit, you lose a month. Mm-hmm. And what that means is you wind up at different spots around the sun where you think when you're not where you should think you should be, and your seasons get all messed up, and mm-hmm. your ability to record time and understand time becomes very difficult. Yeah, and normally that'd be future <clears throat> me's problem, but we now it is present use extra day. Yeah, and uh, that just presents us with a very interesting problem. That's not really a problem of like how do you fill the time? I mean, you're not actually getting extra time. But in some sense, you are. You're getting an extra day on the calendar. Um, and sometimes when people are fortunate enough to be born on the 29th, um, they have that running joke about... 50 Cent, I believe. Yeah, there was there was a, a woman... Um, I think somebody at the bar was describing how she's turning... Uh, she's turning 20 this year. She's turning 20, so... That would make her 80? She's turning 80 this year. Nice! But because it's she's a leap year baby, she's turning 20 this year. Seems cool. I, I'd be pretty happy to be 20 when I am physically 80. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we fill these gaps in time, but there are smaller gaps in time all over the place. And you mm-hmm. mentioned that gaps in time are the big thing you try to fill. I mean, you talked her earlier about taking the year off of Facebook. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At least of having it on your phone and, and sort of consciously spending less time browsing it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, so th- 
what we were when we were coming up with the idea for the show and whatnot, we were thinking about leap year in terms of having this extra time and what do you do with this extra day. But then we started to morph the conversation into, you know, just extra time or gaps in time in general. And we we had an interesting conversation about like the difference between filling gaps and say reclaiming time, mm-hmm. creating gaps, creating space, anything like that. So. Um, sometimes in, in my case, my focus lately has been, um, the idea of reclaiming time. So a lot of my time gets used up and to a certain degree Mm -hmm. wasted on things that I, I, in some sense, find frivolous. So, uh, passive consumption of media such as Netflix, mindlessly scrolling through social media, um, you know, it's fun, It's mm-hmm. it can be entertaining, it can be informative, but a lot of times the the opportunity cost there is the amount of time you're sinking into it, um, which could be directed otherwise. Mm-hmm. And it's the accumulation of those tiny little moments that ends up, you know, you could, if you could reclaim all that time and turn it into something else, like practicing guitar... Or in my case, reading. That's the big thing that I'm using with my reclaim time is uh, reading. Uh, as of filming, um, we're not quite a full two months into the year, and I've already read or listened to six books. Wow. Which is three times more than what I did for, I think, all of last year. I, on the other hand, am way behind on my reading as well, wow. so I might need to reclaim some of that time. Yeah. So it just it comes down to... Um, Leap Year has afforded us the opportunity to reflect on how we use our time, or specifically what happens to fill in those gaps. Yeah. And, yeah, for, for me, I, I definitely see those gaps in time. Like For you, it's, it seems like you're not sort of finding gaps in time. Your time is very full. Mm-hmm. You're just trying to make space for stuff that you, you find more meaningful, mm-hmm. which seems really interesting and, and useful. Mm-hmm. It's very lawful, Ryan. Ah, uh, yeah, well, I know. it's. Uh, <laughs> it, it reminds me of that meme that gets circulated around, um, you know, it used to be through emails, now through social media, the professor and the, the rocks in the jar. Oh, there's always room for a beer? Yeah, well, yes. f- f- the ones that I've always read is usually coffee, but hmm. um, for those of you... For, I've uh, never read that, Yeah, uh, the for, coffee one. But for those of you paying attention to the podcast, either listening or watching, the basic gist of it is, is if you... Uh, and I'll, I'll just cut the story and talk about it in terms of the the core message uh if your time is a jar it has a finite amount of space and you have several different sized objects that could fill it up with large rocks being the most important things and then progressively smaller yeah you know, down small, to like sand small rocks and pebbles sand and whatnot you know you could try to pour in the minuscule sand but it will you'll run out of room for rocks so the best way to do it is to fill your time in with the most important things to you you know family career depending on how you want to mm-hmm. value it but uh, you pour the most important things first and then you pour the smaller things in there and you give it a little shake so that it all settles out and then you take your frivolous stuff or the tiny little things and you pour that in like sand or whatever and it fills the gaps even more and then in my case just pour the coffee on top to ensure that you constantly got energy to to fill yourself. Up. Yeah, no, the the one that I the way that I've always heard that is is the end. They take a beer and they pour it in the top, and the beer fits mm. in there because the liquid fills all the, all the cracks. And 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 the remark is also don't forget there's always room for a beer. Yeah, which I, I find to be really interesting mm. because changing that out for coffee really changes the meaning of that. Yeah. I mean, in the sense of coffee as like a provider of energy and and things like that, whereas a beer is is the notion is that. Don't forget to take time to relax. Yeah. Which is definitely a, a good way to fill gaps in time. I mean, yeah. it's, it's easy to forget that time spent relaxing is not necessarily time wasted. No, for sure. I, I am not always quick to recognize the difference between relaxing and hiding, but... Yeah, and I, I certainly have a hard time absolving myself of the guilt that comes with time <laughs> that is not productive, you oh. know. Oh, we're aware. <laughs> the infamous work diaries of Ryan Huckle. Yep. Will, uh, we need to like, post fragments of them on a Tumblr or something. Maybe. Next year. Next Maybe. year's challenge. Maybe. My challenge is going well. I haven't missed a date yet. I, on the other hand, am an abysmal planker, partly because I had the flu. Yeah, it's kind of hard to plank when you can't work your arms and legs. Ill, yeah. um, no, my gaps, however, and, and this ties into it, is my gaps 
more often than not, are, are, are I have gaps in time. I spend way too much time playing video games. I just got a new computer, so I've been spending way too much time playing Skyrim. Spoilers, that's what I'm going to do after we're done recording tonight. I don't care how late it is, because I'm a monster. Mm-hmm. But my gaps are gaps of attention. I am not as mindful of the other people in my life as I feel I ought to be. And that is that is true in in work relationships, it's true in friendships, it's true in personal relationships and, and romance and things like that, is that I am I am continually a less mindful than I would like to be. Mm-hmm. And it's because I, I get focused on doing one or two things and everything else just sort of fades out of view. And I feel like that it's like that for a lot of people. I don't think I'm alone in that. Mm-hmm. But one of the ways I have started filling those gaps, and one of the ways I often fill those gaps, is technology. Mm-hmm. And I mean, not just in the sense that that is what my time is filled with, because it is. I mean, I spend, I don't know, 14 out of my waking 20 hours, no, 18 hours, in front of a computer. Actually, 14 seems rather conservative. Um, now that I think about it. But I spend a lot of time on computers. I spend a lot of time you know, working with tech stuff. But no, I, like more specifically, um, I set up things like reminders to remind me to contact people. And reach out to people who maybe I haven't talked to them in a month or two months. Or sometimes like a year. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, it reminds me that like these are people who are valuable and meaningful to me and who matter. And I forget about them because they, they sort of wander outside the sphere of my, my tunnel vision. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that is unfortunate. Uh, I, read, I read an article recently. It fills me with sort of this deep terror, but it, it, it really got to me. And part of that, it was the, this article about uh, living as though it is your last year on Earth. Mm-hmm. And my big problem with it was I do not want to live that way. I am familiar with living that way, and it is horrible. What I need to do is live as though I am going to die an old, old man. And I need to build things that last. And I need to maintain and create the friendships that matter. Mm-hmm. And I am not as good at doing that as I should be, and as a, as I would like to be. Um, and so I, I fill that with tech to help me remind not remind me not just to you know go to appointments and stuff, but like hey, call this person. You haven't talked to them in this amount of time. You should see what they're up to, and see what their life is like because you barely you know like you barely see them. Mm-hmm. And you do miss them, even if you don't remember that you do. I, rem- I was remarking to you earlier that we, admittedly, are both people who don't have a lot of time, but and, and our schedules are very at odds, but we don't really hang out anymore, apart from podcast night, which admittedly is like once a week. Mm-hmm. No, it is true. Uh, very Being very deliberate with, or intentional with... You know the time and interactions. Do you feel though that the um, your the feeling that you're you're you have a gap in attention and whatnot is somehow there's a there's a gap in some sense of uh, of an expectation that you you see the way you are and then you have some sort of conception of the way you should be and you find that there's a gap Absolutely. there that you're trying to fill, close, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, like I. I expect my, and I don't think it's unreasonable to expect myself to be more mindful. Like mm-hmm. I expect myself to be more mindful of others and and of the people in my life. I expect myself to be more compassionate. Mm-hmm. I expect myself to be uh, to have more empathy. Like these are things I find gaps in all the time. And and what I expect myself to do is is figure out what those gaps are and figure out how to repair them because those are those are necessary things that need to get filled. Like mm-hmm. the the remark that I often make is that 
I have been fortunate enough to meet many, many people who where, where, like, who, where, where upon meeting them I have this feeling that if I do right by them they will not only be my friend for the rest of my life but they will be a friend worth having for the rest of my life mm. and the key part of that is not that they are a friend worth having it is that that is contingent on me doing right by them mm -hmm. and so the feeling that I have not done so is poignant and demands attention. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like there's, I, I definitely have an expectation. I don't, I don't know that it's like a, an expectation that I find when comparing myself to others. I think sometimes, mm -hmm. but I have also sort of come to understand that, especially with with friends, there are no rules. Like everybody, much like romance, everybody handles friendship differently. Mm -hmm. And every friendship is going to be different from person to person. I mean, I have friends that I don't talk with for years, and then we just sort of get together at stuff. And it is like nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. And I have friends where if I don't talk to them every day, they get a little weirded out. But, yeah, I don't, like, I, I don't know how to compare that to other people's friendships, probably because I don't have a lot of insight into other people's friendships. No. They're sort of opaque and mysterious to me, which I think is the true for... I don't... <laughs> I don't think that's part of my, like, weird opacity of the world. Mm -hmm. I think that that's just true for everybody. Mm -hmm. Other people's friendships are a black box. You look at people and you're like, why are they friends? The answer is because of lots of reasons that you don't understand and yeah. don't have in your experience. Yeah, the shared experiences of other people that you're exactly. privy to. Um, it's it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm going to pick up on a thread there that, that we discussed a little bit in the pre-show, but that you just mentioned here is glimpsing into... The life the lives of others, mm -hmm. um, and that, and this is something that tends to be trod out a lot in discussions of social media and whatnot. But um, that gap that people sometimes see between the state of their life and the perfect presentation or representation of another person's life, yep. and the gap that exists there, um, and I mean, it gets it gets cashed out in different ways. Um, for on social media it tends to be you understand your predicaments and you understand your sadness or at least you experience your sadness mm -hmm. um, versus the kind of picture perfect representation that somebody puts out on social media um, that's I don't think that's necessarily new there's always been that kind of envy at a distance yeah I'm keeping or, up with that. I think keeping up with the with the Joneses is actually the wrong way to phrase it now mm -hmm. that I now that I say it aloud. Yeah, I don't think that's framing it in the way that you're articulating it, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. And so sometimes there there can be a gap there in terms of the coveting. Yeah, coveting would be a good way to put it. You that's know, how, that's how you, the Bible would put you, it. You you see how you know other people are taking trips or vacations and having fun or you know going and seeing interesting things, going out to shows coffee and drinks, you know, clothing, material things, you know, you, you you can sometimes see that gap and then, you know, you want, you have this desire to fill it, to, to either close the gap and bring yourself closer to them. But it's really funny because you also mentioned that you don't tend to feel that with average people. I, I, average I, people's the wrong yeah, way I, mean, I, mean, I think I can catch that out a bit. I, I, our, like w when you say average people, I mean I, I think really it's it's more average things, and it is like like the lives of other people are particularly opaque to me. Mm -hmm. Like I can read somebody's Facebook feed or or talk with somebody you know with, over drinks after work, and I can learn. Mm -hmm all kinds of things about their life and what they do at home, what they do for fun, what they, you know, what their romantic partner is like, what their family is like. And none of it makes any sense to me. I don't... Like, I have, I have no... Even after I have been told everything, I have little to no window into that experience. I don't know what that's like for everybody else. I, I I don't know if that's a brain thing or what, but I don't I just don't understand. 
Like, I understand that that is, that is what it's like for them, but I, I, I can look at all those facts and not understand a thing about them. Mm-hmm. And because of that, like I, I don't. I mean, I mean, there's a, there's a feeling of alienation that often comes along with that, and I've talked about that in, in other videos and other blog posts and things like that. But I think that the other part of that is I don't often envy them for those things because I don't understand those things. Like I don't understand why they would want them. I don't understand the things that they want or the things that they do. I barely understand the things I want and do. <laughs> but. Yeah, there's this sort of weird freedom, I guess, that Mm -hmm. comes with it. Uh, Often where I do feel that is when I see how they interact with other people, because that's a thing that I do, Mm -hmm. and I have a window into how I do that. Mm -hmm. So extroverts, for example, I think this is a common introvert sort of thing when you're an introvert and you see extroverts, you know, being the life of the party, and you're like, oh, fuck that person. Mm. I wish I was the life of the party. And I mean, but nobody's an introvert or extrovert all the time. So sometimes you are the life of the party. Mm-hmm. It just depends on the right... But You just need to be at the right party. But the thing where I do experience it, mo- more often than not, is artistic endeavors. Mm-hmm. I mean, here is a, a, a... Like, it's a very small frame of reference where I do understand. And there are clear metrics for success. And we're clearly participating in the same thing. Mm-hmm. And that is where I can I, I experience that gap in expectation where I'm like I I see people who are you know ahead of me uh, artistically or creatively or you know successfully like not even not even like monetary or, or or social media success or anything like that but just people who I will look at their art or I will listen to their music and I will be like oh my god they are so much better than me and they are not it is not magic that they are better than me they're better than me because they have poured a ton of time and blood and sweat and tears into it mm-hmm. there's a there's a local guitarist i will link him in the show notes uh Jeanette. Jeanette is our city's to my knowledge our city's only flamenco guitarist and he is amazing and i have seen him play probably half a dozen times i have uh, played at events where he has played. I have, and I play a teeny, tiny, teeny, itty bitty bit of flamenco guitar, but not really. I mostly play rock and blues and pop, and you all know that because you're on this channel. But every once in a while, I'm like, man, I would really love to play with him. And he's a really cool guy, and I'm sure he'd be happy to jam, but at the same time, he outclasses me in every way because he's just, he's put in that time, and he's put in that work. Mm-hmm. And that is what I am envying, is I am envying the amount of time and work that they have put into it. I am like, wow. Because it is not magic. Mm-hmm. It is it is, it is hard work and dedication. And I'm like, oh. And, it's, and again, it comes back to me. It's like, why am I not that dedicated? Mm-hmm. There, I, I find that, I, I, I take that gap in expectation and I find that gap in myself. <laughs> well, I mean... Really, when you think about it, though, a lot of times that gap is just a gap in energy level. Also that. I mean, you and I are... are uh, I hate to say, like, we're busy as as it's, as if it's some sort of... Let's not use that word. Let's, ban, let's officially ban that word from the podcast. Yeah, but you and I occupy our time with a lot of projects and a lot of personal things. And, I mean, sometimes it is incredibly difficult to, to manage that gap between where you feel and where you need to be in order to perform. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... So, I've not really made much of a secret in the last little bit, especially after getting a Fitbit late last year and tracking my sleep, that I am a lot worse at the whole sleep management thing than I thought I was. I figured, oh, you know, I'm easily getting like six hours, seven hours of sleep or whatever, but... You know, because I'm so undisciplined when it comes to sleep. I'm getting like five and a half hours. That seems ideal. Yeah. For me. Yeah. But, um, it's so sometimes at work, trying to manage my energy levels. Um, I also try to go to the gym twice a week. You know, we podcast, we do volunteer stuff. 
And so sometimes it's really difficult to when when you come home and you flop on the couch for just a little bit of time. That little bit of time turns into two hours. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar um, with that. You know, that's one of the reasons why I'm not really doing Netflix too much anymore. But I'll still do it with like The West Wing. You know, put on. <laughs> I'll I'll I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make some dinner. And Coming I'll soon, the down. the West Wing podcast. Yeah, and I'll, I'll sit down, like, oh, I'll watch an episode, and and then it ends on a really good, not quite cliffhanger, but enough that I want to continue forward. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you know, five episodes later. It's like, wow, man, I really, really dropped the ball on that one. Well, I guess it's like, uh, oh, two o'clock in the morning. It's time to record a vlog and then go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I know that feeling only for me. It's taking naps while watching YouTube. <laughs> I'll throw on, like, uh, a recording from Channel Fireball, like LSV. Mm-hmm. I will begin to watch him completely wreck someone in draft. Um, and then I will sort of doze while I do it, and I will set my my alarm on my phone, but that alarm is negotiable. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I definitely, yeah, the gaps in energy where you're like, <laughs> I need to be energetic, and I am, I am just drained. And I, like, it's a weird feeling. Like, I mentioned, like, like, like I have a job that, that, I solve problems all day, so I, it occupies a lot of my creative creative energy, a lot more than I like to think it does. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to record music, and by the time I get home, I'm just like, oh my god, I'm going to make a frozen pizza and die. I'm just going to lay in bed forever. Um, which doesn't occur to me until I've already put a frozen pizza in the oven, and I have to get up, otherwise my house will burn down. <laughs> but... That's, that's a new form of setting the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Call me back when the house is on fire. Yeah. Why are you answering your shoes? Shut up! But no, it, it's... it's And I, I have to continually remind myself to spin up rather than spin down. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I may have said earlier in the pre-show, I have to, quote, take some imaginary meth end quote and speed up my 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 brain because when i do like when i and i've started to trade music for naps like instead of taking a nap for half an hour i will play guitar for half an hour Mm -hmm. and i almost always feel better i get it because it takes that energy and reuses it because realistically the energy mechanics of a human being in their day are entirely in my imagination. They correspond to no understanding of energy that is remotely validated by science. Mm -hmm. They're just how I compartmentalize things like my attention and how tired I am. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of ways to get my second wind. Naps are not one of them. Mm -hmm. So you just spin up, think faster, go and, and... to quote a bro, go hard. Yeah, I find with uh, managing my energy levels, it ultimately comes down to systems. Um, I need to... Usually it's putting some sort of system in place that mitigates my lack of will. It, it ultimately sometimes comes down to like a question of acrasia. Of like, how weak is my will going to be, and how... How many tools am I going to put at my disposal mm-hmm. to be able to overcome my natural, my natural um, regression to to you know the path of least resistance? So it, it at one point it was You're a regular Huckleberry Finn. I know. So um, it used to be things like um, I would drive immediately from my job at the college to the gym. You know the idea of short circuiting that. If I get home and take mm. my pants off, I'm done. That's it. Like I, yeah. it's, so it, it, I used to do that when I was going like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now I have like a, an established Tuesday ru- routine and an established Saturday routine when I go to the gym. So I, I don't have to think about it. It's just okay. Time to get up. Time to go. Kind of yeah. deal. Same with my grocery shopping or you know any any of the other things. I just need to figure out a way that I can trick myself into doing it. Fair. Yeah, I, I I definitely do that with some things when I was when I was taking da- dance classes. When I'm taking dance classes, I will leave from work, mm-hmm. 
Like, I will stay at work for an extra two hours, if necessary, to leave from there rather than coming home and leaving from there. Because once I come home and I start doing, like, even if even if I'm actually doing stuff, I'm playing music or editing videos or, like, if, even if I'm doing stuff that I would classify as sort of useful and, and interesting and energetic, I get wrapped up in it mm-hmm. and I get that tunnel vision and I don't want to stop. Mm-hmm. So it is easier for me to stay at work and focus on that and then leave work, go to dance, come back, and then do whatever it was I was going to do. Yeah. But yeah, those are the gaps we noticed. And gaps in time, mm-hmm. gaps in attention. Yeah, for me it was uh, gaps in empathy. Like, where you, for you mm-hmm. it's attention, for me it's specifically empathy. I'm always struck, uh, they, they, there are more and more studies coming out that video games don't affect your your empathy at all. Like, they don't they don't... Violent video games don't affect your aggression or your empathy. They don't cause mental disorders or anything like that. And it intrigues me because I know lots of, of you know nerds who play shooters who will cite those studies. But the follow through for me is always that means that when there are gaps in my empathy, it's not the fault of video games. Mm-hmm. It it is because there are gaps in my empathy, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I need to deal with that. Yeah, like if it is not video games. Then it is something else, yeah. and uh, th- I mean it is not a thing I want to have gaps in. Yeah. But what do you do to fill time? Yeah, especially because today is leap year or leap yeah. day. So how are you going to fill today, your extra day of the year? What are you going to do to to fill that time? You have one whole day more than you did every other year, except for those years that were every four years. Yep. Anyways, drop us a line in the comments. Let us know what you're going to do for today. We'd like to hear. We read all the comments. We do. You can also uh, contact us on Twitter, Mm -hmm. at Wootsuit. Mm -hmm. um, Or subscribe to us on YouTube, Mm -hmm. at youtube.com slash Wootsuit Riot, which you might be watching this at. Or iTunes. There are lots and lots of places. You can Mm -hmm. find them in the show notes below. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay gap-free. Gap-free? Okay, maybe not. Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Look at that. Look at us. (laughs) Fucking pros. Three years in, I'd hope so. (laughs)